Read and listen to a conversation about a moral dilemma. I can't believe it. I just picked this up to look at it, and the thing broke in two. And with these ridiculous prices, it's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, forget it. I'll bet it was already broken. <laughs> You're probably right. Just put it back on the shelf. The place is empty. No one saw. Let's just split. I couldn't do that. Why not? You said it yourself. The prices are ridiculous. Well, put yourself in the owner's shoes. Suppose the plate were yours. How would you feel if someone broke it and didn't tell you? Well, I'm not the owner. And anyway, for him, it would be just a drop in the bucket. To you, it's a lot of money. Yeah, maybe so. But if I ran out without telling him, I couldn't face myself. Read and listen to people discussing an ethical choice. Look at this. They didn't charge us for the desserts. Really? I think we'd better tell the waiter. You think so? Absolutely. If we didn't tell him, it would be wrong. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Look at this. They didn't charge us for the desserts. Really? I think we'd better tell the waiter. You think so? Absolutely. If we didn't tell him, it would be wrong. Listen and repeat. We'd better tell the waiter. We should tell the waiter. We ought to tell the waiter. Read and listen. One. What would you do if the waiter didn't charge you for the dessert? Two. What would you do if you found a wallet on the street? Three. Who would you call if you were sick? Four. Where would you go if you wanted a great meal? Now listen again and repeat. What would you do if the waiter didn't charge you for the dessert? What would you do if you found a wallet on the street? Who would you call if you were sick? Where would you go if you wanted a great meal? Let's change the conversation model. Look at this. They gave us too much change. Really? I think we should tell the waitress. You think so? Absolutely. If we didn't tell her, I would feel bad. Now let's change the conversation model again. Don't stop. Say more. Say as much as you can. Look at this. They undercharged us. Really? I think we ought to go back to the store. You think so? Absolutely. If we didn't tell the clerk, I couldn't face myself. Oh, and look at this. Wow, what a nice sweater. It is really nice, but I didn't buy it. You're kidding. Did they charge us for the sweater? No, they didn't. Let's just keep it. No way. It's a nice store. If you don't take the sweater back, the clerk will have to pay for it. Put yourself in his shoes. You're right. Let's go. Listen and repeat. They didn't charge us for the cake. 
They undercharged me. They gave me too much change. They gave me more than I ordered. Read and listen to a conversation about returning property. Excuse me, I think you forgot something. I did? Isn't this jacket hers? Oh, you're right, it is. That's nice of you. Don't mention it. Listen and repeat. Don't mention it. My pleasure. You're welcome. Not at all. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Excuse me, I think you forgot something. I did? Isn't this jacket hers? Oh, you're right, it is. That's nice of you. Don't mention it. Listen to the conversations and complete each statement with a possessive pronoun. Conversation 1. Hey, look what I found under the table. What? A shopping bag from the Emporium. It's full of clothes. No kidding. I wonder whose it is. Maybe it belongs to that woman paying at the cashier. You're right. Excuse me, is this bag yours? It was under our table. Yes, it is. Thanks so much. That's so kind of you. No problem. Conversation 2. Brad, I think you might have dropped your keys on cell phone. What? I don't think so. My phone's right here in my pocket. Hey, no it isn't. Let me have a look at that phone. Here you go. Wow, you're right. That is mine. Where did you find it? Here, right next to these keys. I suppose these are yours too. Well, actually, the keys are my wife's. She's going to be so happy I didn't lose them. Conversation 3 I don't believe it. This coat isn't mine. What do you mean it isn't yours? It isn't mine. Remember when we got to the restaurant, I hung up my coat with all the others. You know how it is. All these raincoats look the same. What are you going to do? I'll drive back to the restaurant and see if my coat's still there. And what if it isn't? I don't know. Maybe the person who took my coat will call. I have my name and address in the vest pocket. Anyway, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Conversation 4 What is going on here? These aren't the right tickets. What are you talking about? They're for tomorrow, not tonight. H how could that have happened? Uh-oh. What? Did you get these from the kitchen counter or the dining room table? The dining room? Oh, no. Those were the tickets I got for Julie and Glenn. I told you to take the ones from the kitchen. Oops. Let's change the conversation model. Excuse me. I think you forgot something. I did? Aren't these glasses yours? Oh, you're right. They are. That's nice of you. My pleasure. Now, let's change the conversation model again. Say as much as you can. Excuse me. I think you forgot something. I did? Isn't this purse yours? Oh, you're right. It is. That's so nice of you. And what about this earring? It was under the table. Is it yours too? No. It's beautiful, but it isn't mine. But thanks anyway. Not at all.
Listen to each conversation. Then circle the correct word or phrase to complete each statement. Conversation 1. Luke, tomorrow's your first day in your new job. You're not going to wear that earring, are you? I was going to. Why not? Well, if I were you, I wouldn't wear it. It may not be appropriate in the office. That's crazy. What's wrong with an earring, Beth? Nothing. But lots of people are old-fashioned and they don't think men should wear earrings, at least at the office. You're only 28 and you sound like my grandmother. This is the 21st century. In any case, I need to be who I am. I'm an individualist. Conversation 2 Celia, what a great tattoo. When did you get it? Just last week. But my husband thinks it's awful. Doesn't he have one too? Yes. But he says, it's not the same thing. You mean he thinks it's okay for a man, but not for a woman? You got it. What a double standard. Conversation 3 Mark, I'm really unhappy. My daughter wants to go to law school. That's great. What's the problem? Well, I was hoping she'd marry a lawyer, not be one. Why's that? Well, it's just that I think men should be lawyers and women should stay home and have children. That's a little sexist if you ask me. Conversation 4 Kate, you can't go out in those clothes. I can see your tummy. So? That's the style. Don't you watch TV, read magazines? I don't care. Girls should be modest. People will think you're a bad girl. But Dad, you know I'm a good person. I follow all the rules. Everyone knows that. That's true. But modesty is very important for girls. If you're modest, people will know you're a good girl. Read and listen. Man risks life to save another. Many people who ride a busy urban subway wonder, what would happen if I fell off the platform and onto the tracks? What would I do? Others wonder, what would I do if someone else fell? That question was answered in a split-second decision made by subway hero Wesley Autry, a 50-year-old New York City construction worker on his way to work. Autry jumped onto the tracks to save a fellow passenger from an oncoming New York City subway train. The passenger, Cameron Hollipeter, 20, a film student at the New York Film Academy, had fallen between the tracks after suffering a seizure. Autry rolled Hollipeter into a gap between the rails and covered him with his own body just as the train entered the station. Both men survived. I don't feel like I did something spectacular. I just saw someone who needed help, Mr. Autry said. I did what I felt was right. Homeless man returns wallet with $900. Santa Ana, California. A homeless man searching through trash bins for recyclable cans found a missing wallet and returned it to its owner. Kim Bogue, who works in the city, realized that her wallet was missing last week and doubted she'd ever get back the $900 and credit cards inside. I prayed that night and asked God to help me, said Bogue, who was saving the money for a trip to her native Thailand. Days later, a homeless man found the wallet wrapped in a plastic bag in the trash, where Bogue had accidentally thrown it away with her lunch. He gave it to Sherry Wesley, who works in a nearby building. He came to me with a wad of money and said, This probably belongs to someone that you work with. Can you return it? Wesley said. He has a very good heart, said Bogue, who gave the man a $100 reward. If someone else had found it, the money would have been gone. An Act of Honesty by Airport Screener New Delhi In a display of honesty, a security agent at the Indira Gandhi International Airport handed over a small plastic bag with $3,000 U.S. dollars in cash to a passenger who had completely forgotten the bag after it passed through the airport screening machine. Noticing that the bag had been left behind, Dalbir Singh made an announcement asking passengers to come forward to claim it. However, when no one claimed it, Singh inspected the baggage tag and guessed it probably belonged to a passenger en route to Mumbai. 
An announcement was made on the next flight to Mumbai, and the owner of the bag came forward to collect it. Singh was given a cash reward for his honesty. Listen to the conversations. Check yes or no to answer each question and explain your answers. Conversation 1. Grandma, you're going to get a tattoo? You've got to be kidding. Why? What's wrong with a tattoo? You're too old. Tattoos are for young people. So, John, you think there should be different rules for young people and old people? Conversation 2. Jessica, please be home by 10. 10? Mom, that's ridiculous. I don't think so. But Mark doesn't have to be home until midnight. Mark is a boy. Mom, why should boys and girls have different rules? Conversation 3. Alex, let me give you some fatherly advice. Sure, Dad. What is it? When you take Allison out tomorrow, be sure to open the car door for her when she gets into your car. You're not serious. I am. That kind of thing really impresses a young woman. No offense, Dad, but that's pretty old-fashioned. Allison is my age. Say that stuff for Mom, okay?